So my inspiration happened three years ago uh, when I was started to read about the Marsh Arabs, study their construction method, their uh, architectural language, and this uh, read material. So this was like my main motivation of why I am interested in the Marsh Arabs. And it's also for the world to tell them that we have a lot of indigenous uh, architecture in the Arab world that we would like to showcase and honor. My name is Ula, I'm from Iraq and raised in Bahrain. Uh, I'm kind of uh, architecture, urban designer and uh, interested in research-driven art. So the materials I used are uh, reeds. These materials are exported from the marshlands in Iraq. And uh, this is actually the whole point of this uh, installation is to let people experience the Mudif as authentic as is, a 100% experience of what the Mudif really is, uh, the materiality, the scale and the space. Uh, I think this material could be easily adapted in today's world. It's very sustainable, it's very durable and it's very heat resistant. And during my installation I started to experiment uh, doing table out of this material and also doing uh, benches out of this material which is good if we can use it for urban furniture so we can adapt and we can play with this material of course in today's world so like the table and the benches now when we go into public space we have a lot of concrete benches right when you go throughout the day uh, it's very hot you can barely sit on it what I'm trying to say is that this material is heat absorbent and then it, it resists the heat, so even during the sun, it's not going to get very hot where it gets, uh, where it annoys the user. A use out of this resistance would be, of course, uh, amazing in today's world. The marsh Arabs are very, very, very depending on water uh, in terms of their life, their biodiversity. And this material is actually grows in water. So if the water is gone, everything else is gone. And I think the world needs to know that we need to do something towards this water depletion so that we can maintain this uh, architectural heritage. And then we can also adapt it differently throughout the generations. I actually found a lot of challenges. For example, bending the arches, caring about the stability, for me, like, it's very something new. However, in a world that everything wants to be contemporary and new, I chose to, to do the Malif as is, to let the people experience it as is. And it's still looking beautiful because it's a timeless design. So, uh, of course, there was like the visual elements, the play with lighting. And then when you enter it, you get to see the material as raw as is, so you can touch it, you can see it, and then you can hear a lot of sounds that are from the marshlands, singing and using the instruments of the marshlands. So um, there's also like materials of water and rocks, and then when you enter, there's also the smell of the, of the, of the material that you can uh, comfortably feel. And I heard so many comments as well today, people passed by and they said, oh, it smells like Iraq. So it was really good uh, for me to, to hear that uh, because that means I'm delivering the multi-sensory experience. Actually, this installation made me reconnect to my homeland because I got to talk to the communities in the marshland closely. I got to understand uh, their construction method taught me how to be patient, taught me how to be more familiar with the material itself and testing the material possibilities. And I got to understand their hospitality as well. The opportunity of Abwaab and Dubai Design Week uh, was great. It was really nice to shed light on the vernacular architecture in the Arab world. So it felt really good 
uh, the team was very supportive and I think it's a good platform to showcase the people because everyone comes to Dubai and I think everyone would see the structure now and uh, they will actually feel like, oh, it's actually nice. And this is the whole point of this installation.